The Flaw in the Stone Written by Cynthia Masson Narrated by Sharon Taylor For Anita Young and Tammy Joseph In Gratitude for the Transformational Alchemy of Friendship The Rebel Branch Urges You to Read This Book Prima Materia Long before Jaden witnessed the mutual conjunctions of Sadira with Kalina and Arjan with Dracane, the Alchemist Council and the Rebel Branch had worked for millennia at cross purposes. The Alchemist Council aimed to perfect the Lapis by vanquishing its flaw, whereas the Rebel Branch sought to increase the flaw and thereby regain control of the Lapis. According to sacraments of the Alchemist Council, Perfecting the lapis culminates in eternal union as the communal one. According to decrees of the rebel branch, maintaining the flaw preserves free will throughout the dimensions. Until the war over the lapis is ultimately waged and won, Council holds responsibility for maintaining the elemental balance of the outside world through the quintessential power of the lapis. To increase this quintessence, Alchemists in Council Dimension participate in the Sacrament of Conjunction, a ritual wherein two beings fully merge into one body and mind. Meanwhile, in Flaw Dimension, rebels seek the means to alter this sacrament through blood alchemy. The means to ensure conjunction becomes mutual. Two minds, two essences, two beings each sustaining free will within one body, fused through the ancient bloodline. We are the blood of the dragon. We live as the flaw in the stone. Prologue Flaw Dimension 1848 Genevieve had merely wanted time to herself to contemplate matters. Within months, she would turn thirty thus reaching her day of decision. Like all who resided in Flaw Dimension, whether rebel alchemists or outside world scribes, she would formally announce her choice on that day. She rehearsed both options repeatedly. I, Genevieve, outside world scribe, in choosing to ingest dragon blood elixir, hereby commit myself to the rebel branch. I, Genevieve, outside world scribe, in choosing to reject dragon blood elixir, hereby reject the rebel branch. What would become of her, she wondered, if she chose to reject those who had sheltered her? She needed time and space alone to think. The caverns of Flaw Dimension were spacious, but rarely empty of rebels, attendants, or miners performing one task or another. Her own quarters, while private, felt too confining of late. As she was still officially training with the rebel branch, she could not venture into the outside world without accompaniment. So only one choice remained. Thus, despite her trepidation, she entered the rickety lift and maneuvered its mechanisms without assistance to lower herself into what she assumed were the deepest archives. Genevieve walked slowly along the main passageway, intermittently peering into the dimly lit archival rooms along the way. She saw no one in the first five rooms. In the sixth, brightly lit with large, low-hanging luminescence lanterns, she noticed Azoth Fraxinus struggling with the weight of a large manuscript. She considered helping him, but decided doing so would defeat her purpose of removing herself from the company of others, and continued past the room unnoticed. The remaining four rooms along the passageway were empty. She stood a few steps beyond the tenth room, considering whether to wander down the dark, narrow passageway to her right. She regretted not bringing her portable luminescence lantern. She had not realized the secondary passageways would be completely unlit. In her decade with the rebel branch, even during official lessons as an apprentice, She had never had reason to explore the archives beyond the main corridor. Just as she was about to turn back, she was startled by a flash of light quite a distance down the dark passageway. A sec- 